Well, good morning. Uh, in my previous video uh, on uh, XYZ, uh, uh, in the comments, uh, uh, I was asked, well, why would you use uh, uh, the, the Z axis at any point? And uh, I wanted to give just a quick uh, example of uh, why you'd use it. So, what I have here is the 2235A, and I have uh, X, Y, and cable going to the Z axis on the back of the machine. What I then have is those three items connected over here to my uh, 8340B uh, signal generator, uh, synthesized sweeper. And uh, what I have is uh, I have uh, the sweep signal, I have the output signal, and then this is going to be the Z-axis, and I'll plug this into uh, uh, my patch panel just up here to get to the Z-axis uh, blanking output of the device. The last thing that I have uh, attached is a crystal detector, and the crystal detector basically uh, takes the signal uh, frequency and the signal power out of the front, of the, take the signal power out of the unit, converts it into... Uh, a simple electrical uh, voltage that I can then go and uh, uh, have a look at on the scope. So, you know, if I turn the, the scope on, this is the signal that you'll see. And let me see if I can just turn that off so that you can get a, maybe get a bit of a better focus on that. No, it's probably overdriving. Hang on. Um, yep. Clearly. My hounds have uh, decided to play. Anyway, that's about as good as I can get it. Um, hang on. Okay, now that I have them uh, calmed down, uh, it's the morning, so drink of choice is coffee. Okay, so what we're seeing here is the power output. Now this is a, uh, a negative going uh, uh, a crystal detector so man shouldn't have touched that there we go that's a negative going so the sweep is starting and the sweep is set to run from uh, 10 megahertz to 80 megahertz so at the start of the sweep the power comes down it generates a negative voltage and you can see the uh, the voltage uh, result of the, the sweep there so if I zoom into that a little bit let me just position this and then I'm going to see if we can extend that and then um, can I get more of the, let's come back, you know, so what uh, I'm looking at here is that's the output coming out of the uh, crystal detector and so you can see that there's some uh, change in the, you know, the value, there's a little bit of uncertainty which is why we're getting not a nice sharp line as it bounces around because the uh, synthesized sweeper uh, gives me a range but you can see in the middle there that what I have is let me get my pointer I have a little bump right in the middle so you know if I wanted to find out what was that bump you know I'd have to sort of come in here and you know I'd fiddle around a bit and you know then I'd try and get the, the slope right and you know I'd want to bring that in and then I'd try and go okay well let's let's see I know it's from 10 to 80 and it's a 10 millisecond sweep so you know each of these divisions there's five of them will be two milliseconds you know so I can go all right two four about 4.2 you know times 10 millisecond times two milliseconds so that's you know 8.4 milliseconds or uh, into the sweep, sorry, it's 2.4, so it's 4.4 um, 4 milliseconds into the sweep. All right, so based on that, it's 44% of the way through the sweep, 10 to 80, 70 megahertz. So I can sort of roughly work out where it is, but it, it's not really, and that'll bump will be around. So that bump is going to be around about. 40, 41 megahertz, right? Um, but wouldn't it be great if I could have something that would give me that, you know, accurately? Well, that uh, output, if we come over here and look at the, the 8340, this sweep output basically starts when the 10 meg sweep starts and ends when the uh, 80 megahertz 
uh, frequency is set. And so if we look at the sweep time, the sweep time is 10 milliseconds. So now, if I swap over here on my scope, over to a different uh, view, and let's come in and, you know, move that a little bit, and we'll push that, yep, we move that, position that down. And so what you can see here, now I've got this set, to, actually, let's go to, go back to two, no, nah, let's stay there at five. All right, so what you can see is if I position this at the radical line there, so that's zero, and then I start getting a voltage which is equivalent or distributed across the entire sweep. So that starts coming up when the sweep starts, and then when it hits the top point here, that's when the sweep ends. And so at five milliseconds a, a division, you can see that I have a 10 millisecond sweep there. And so if I change the sweep time to say 15 milliseconds, you know, you'd see now it's a three division. Let's come back to 10 milliseconds of division. So this uh, voltage will now tell me where I am in the sweep. So with those two voltages, we can come in and we should be able to set XY mode. And now if I, uh, let's come in and just expand it a little bit and then move it back in. There you go. So now you can sort of, you can see the correlated sweep time, the two items together. And so it's telling me where it is, but you see the rest of this stuff. Let me actually drop that down and drop that down. You see the rest of this gunk around here is making it a little bit confusing. So what I want to do is get rid of that. And that's the first part uh, that happens with the, uh, with the, the, the Z axis. The Z axis, remember in the previous uh, video, can either blank or intensify. So what we would want to do is to have it set to, to blank. So let me hook that in. And there you can see now the signal is blanked when the device is doing its step back, getting ready, you know, restarting the sweep again. So now I can focus specifically on just the actual sweep uh, that I'm looking at and now I can start to sort of say okay you know here is you know my, my division you know I can see where that bump is but it's still a little bit hard to tell where that's actually occurring and that's where the second part of the marker of the z-axis comes in where you know instead of being one direction is blanking if I go the other direction now I can intensify so to do that, I come back over here to my 8340 and I'm going to turn on a frequency marker. You can see the frequency marker section here. And now, you know, you can see that I have a frequency marker set at 36.18 hertz. And if you look in here, you know, very softly, you can see if I change that a bit, hopefully you'll be able to see this. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can get a, a really good look at that. You know, you can see there's a little mark there. And so as I move my marker around, you'll see that the little highlighted change. So if we come back up to where we sort of calculated it, which was about 40, you'll see that we're a little bit off because we were doing the, the poking around. But I can come in and I can say, okay, I have the most variability in my signal right around there, around 36 and a quarter megahertz. And now I know specifically, because I'm getting the marker from the sweeper to the actual display on the, the scope. Now in this particular case, the reason I needed this was uh, as part of the calibration or the adjustment process for uh, this uh, 8340, you actually have to look at this exact setup and uh, you, know, you want to get rid of all the extraneous information and you want to uh, display just a nice clean piece of information there that shows what the signal uh, value is and you need to go in and look to see where it deviates because you're looking to try and get rid of squeaking and so you want to be able to come in and check the frequency by looking for this little frequency marker. So anyway, that's a real world example hopefully that uh, uh, is easy to, to, to understand as to why you would uh, uh, use the Z-axis on a uh, XYZ mode for an analog oscilloscope. Hope you found it interesting, and I'll catch you later. Bye.